Hello Internet, welcome to another Antinet tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about reflection coefficient and standing wave ratios. Now, this tutorial is particularly of great help to those who are studying transmission lines and waveguides also. Because the concept of reflection coefficient holds true in antennas transmission lines and waveguides alike. So the very fundamental nature of communication is that whenever a signal goes from one medium to the other, for example we are trying to send a signal from medium 1 to medium 2, it is not possible that the entire signal will pass through some of it is bound to bounce back now why does that happen now the answer to this why is pretty simple medium 1 has eta is equivalent to 1 and medium 2 has eta is equivalent to 2. Now eta is known as the impedance of a medium. Now the very basic nature of communication can be related to human communication also. For example if a person transmits some information to another person it is believed that not all the information can be absorbed by the other person because of the difference of IQ level between the two people and no two people can have the same IQ level same frequency and same attention while they are communicating and the same happens with mediums for example medium 1 has impedance of eta 1 medium 2 has impedance of eta 2 when this wave goes into medium 2 it finds itself into a different zone that bothers the wave and some of it gets adjusted and passes through the medium 2 but some of it reflects back and the calculation of this reflected wave from the medium 2 is known as calculation of reflection coefficient and that also results in standing wave ratios we'll discuss about the formula later now because of this mismatch of the impedances of the medium some part of the wave is reflected back which is given by a parameter known as reflection coefficient and it is denoted by capital Rho a Greek alphabet and basically this is the ratio of how much power is reflected back upon how much power was transmitted for example ET was transmitted and ER is reflected back and E P let us say is the amount of radiation which is propagated into the other medium so this is a pretty simple ratio how much energy is reflected back upon how much was transmitted and the formula for this is even simpler it says that this is equivalent to eta 2 minus eta 1 upon eta 2 plus eta 1. That goes to show that if there is a difference of impedances during the transmission, there is bound to be some reflection. If, if you want your transmission to be absolutely reflection free, free you need to keep the impedances to be equivalent to each other 
and if the impedances are same that means the wave is not com communicating from or propagating from one medium to the other they are propagating in the same medium so reflection coefficient is a fundamental and a must have phenomena in any communication so in terms of antennas what we do is we think of the waveguide carrying the signal to the antenna for example this is antenna with impedance ZA and this waveguide has impedance ZW the point of interface of waveguide and antenna is the boundary and when the signal is passed from the waveguide to the antenna some part of it is reflected back into the transmitting system which is undesirable obviously and this is calculated by reflection coefficient and in our case it should be equal to ZA minus ZW upon ZA plus ZW now to eliminate this reflection coefficient or to minimize this we need to keep ZA to be approximately equivalent to ZW and the second point of interface is antenna and air whenever an antenna radiates its energy into the air it is a classical example of energy transmitting from one medium to the other but we know that the eta for air intrinsic impedance of air is fixed which is 377 ohm so in order to avoid reflection coefficient so this becomes impedance of air minus impedance of antenna upon impedance of air plus impedance of antenna we need to keep the output impedance of the antenna ZA or eta A so to say to be equivalent to or close to 377 a classical example of this is a lambda by 2 antenna has impedance of 73 ohm but a folded dipole has an intrinsic impedance of 4 times 73 ohms that makes it closer to 377 so that is why folded dipole is recommended for transmitting with a lower reflection coefficient lower the reflection coefficient the better is the transmission and based upon reflection coefficient is our next parameter which is standing wave ratio and this has a very simple formula of 1 plus reflection coefficient upon 1 minus reflection coefficient the standing wave ratio is going to be larger if the reflection coefficient is larger so we want the standing wave ratio to be as small as possible because it is the ratio of the reflected wave upon uh, the incoming wave from the transmission system we'll talk about more uh, of standing wave ratio in the coming tutorials and that was it for reflection coefficient i hope this quick tutorial helped and thank you so much for watching the video and if you considered this video as a part of your endeavor to excel in antennas and you found it helpful 
then please consider subscribing the channel thank you so much for watching bye